Hey, remember Sonic Gems Collection? Yes, what about it? I think it's got a smudge mark on it here. No, you're not hallucinating. This actually did exist. But at what cost? Sonic CD was and still is a weird Sonic game. Sonic CD kind of feels like an outcast. Sonic CD was released exclusively for the Sega CD in 1993, and it was the first Sonic game to feature high-quality music and full-motion video, albeit very, very poor full-motion video. And the funny thing is that this game is released on, like, multiple things. Yeah, it says the Sega CD was the first release, and it did get ported over to Windows, PS3, and Xbox 360, and remade for iOS and Android, but what confuses me is that it says it released on PS2 and GameCube, which you have to dig a bit to see it actually was for the Sonic Gems Collection disc. Yeah, sure, are you going to include the Switch, PlayStation 5, and Xbox series for Sonic Origins? I see you Doom running on a pregnancy test, and I don't see Wikipedia updating that, now do we? Now the game itself will put you right into the shoes of the first Sonic game. Yes, the first one, not the second one. That's a weird one though. The game's controls feel like it could be an early build of Sonic 2. The spin dash is hard to get a hang of, and honestly, it doesn't feel fun to use. It's probably because Sonic 2 spoiled me a bit, since I can go at top speed in a near instant with it, and Sonic CD makes you wait and take your time. Sonic has the ability to do a move called the Super Peel Up, which you can go top speed without being in a ball. The only problem is, I don't use this one a whole lot because the level design doesn't really complement the Super Peel Out a whole lot. Yeah, I keep thinking about a banana. The Super Peel Out would never really get used a whole lot in Sonic games, just only here and there, but it's underrated, trust me. One of the main mechanics in this game is the concept of time travel, which is very cool because you can actually change the outcome if you destroy these transporters. Sonic CD, yeah, it was very advanced for its time, but it's a uniquely weird advancement. One of the strangest Sonic games I had ever run across, Sonic CD was developed by the original creators of Sonic 1, while Sonic 2 was being developed by something that sounds like a really funny joke. Sonic CD takes place on a planet called Little Planet. Yeah, clever name in there. The game's Chaos Emeralds had been replaced with Time Stones, which collecting all of them grants you to control the flow of time. Not in game though. Yeah, what this actually does, it destroys all transporters and all robots from the past automatically, so therefore always having the best ending. Then why not make it harder? The special stages are the way to collect the time stones, because it wouldn't be a Sonic game without special stages. It's a 3D style special stage, which you need to destroy... UFOs? The time stones aren't really difficult to get. It's just trying to get into the special stages. You need the good old classic 50 ratings at the end of the stage to get into the special stages. The only problem with that one is that the game can throw some of the most weirdest things even right at the beginning. Yes, I might be impatient, but this is a Sonic game. You can't stop Sonic from being too fast. Two new characters are introduced, which is Metal Sonic and Amy Rose. Now, the locations are all entirely new. They aren't representing any previous Sonic stage. Okay, maybe one, but that's a bit vague. And the music is absolutely amazing. Since this game is on a CD now, you can store high quality recorded music on the game and possibly some full motion video. The only problem with this one is I don't think the Sega Genesis was powerful enough to play something that you might find on a PlayStation 1 game. Yeah, it was before that though, but it was amazing seeing the high quality full motion video at the time. But it's so choppy and you're not even watching the original. No, 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 no. This was the remastered version that was a part of every port since the Sega CD. This is how it looks. Why is it so small? Back to the locations, we start off with Palm Tree Panic, then it goes to Collision Chaos, Tidal Tempest, Quartz Quadrant, Wacky Workbench, the best Sonic stage in any Sonic game ever, and then finally, Metallic Madness. Okay, maybe we can actually get to the meat of this game. I never said it was perfect. Sonic CD just feels like it had certain things just thrown in there. For the time travel mechanic, you need to go through these posts, and keep going fast, not top speed, but enough to keep a fast pace to activate. But the thing is that the stages don't really feel like they thought of this, because it can be hard to keep top speed whenever I want to time travel. And the pose sometimes are put in the most weirdest of places, and when I don't want to time travel, I get caught and I can't stop it. Some spots you can take advantage for the time travel mechanic, that's few and far between. And plus, every once in a while, you do just have the most hardest time trying to get back to a certain time period by accidentally going to the wrong one. Especially this one here, because 90% of the stage is underwater. The one thing that doesn't work well in this game, or any Sonic game, might I add. Yeah, this game is both interesting to play and also makes you want to pull your hair out. How do you do it? The game's physics aren't really something I can get used to either. When falling off of the ledge, Sonic loses all momentum, and that's not the case with any other Sonic game at the time. And the music can be actually pretty good in some of the tracks, and then others are probably going to give you nightmares at night. Sonic CD has the weirdest approach to the whole Sonic series. I think every game has a weird approach. Nice concept, yet bad execution. 
Sonic CD gets often referred as being the one weird time sort of thing. The visual scenery is nice, and the music is stellar, but of course, that was pretty much the original Sega CD release. That's right, Sonic CD had a mobile version too! Now we can have the awesome soundtrack wherever we go! Sonic CD is okay on mobile. Yeah, it's the same as before with the odd level design, and the game just has a weird feeling to it. You have the mobile controls which actually feel okay for the game. I would say it's not as good as other Sonic mobile ports, but it's still okay. Then the menu is a bit weird for really any Sonic game. But what do I know about menus when I can scream and complain about math for the Atari 2600 not having a main menu? But that's not going to change everyone else's opinion. But overall, the mobile port is probably the best option for people. Well, if you need a PS3, you need a PS3. Yes, this did get a port to the Xbox 360 and PS3, and it actually feels pretty good on here, dare I say it. Might be the best port I've seen out of any game. Yeah, take that new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. The Sonic Origins version is just this version but without any extra menus. The release on Sonic Gems Collection isn't really special, it's just Sonic CD but with some enhancements to play at a higher frame rate. But I will pretty much talk about anything you can throw at me. Have you seen me talk about the Super Mario Galaxy soundtrack for an hour straight? But no, that can't be it. The smudge mark was never on this game. It was on this game.